A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 2nd Jan. On the front page you have Gaganyan Chandrayaan 3 in mission mode, says ISRO. So, four pilots from Indian Air Force will leave for Russia in Jan 2020 to receive training as astronauts of Gaganyan. So, this is the first Indian crewed space flight which is being proposed. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced it last year on Independence Day. So, this is the steps have been taken here. A pilots have been trained for this project now because it will be a project manned space mission means people will be sent in space. So, Indian Air Force pilots have been trained for this as astronauts in Russia. Then another announcement which was made is of Chandrayaan 3. This will be country's third lunar mission and this has been approved. It will cost 600 crore rupees and will also try to land in the lunar south pole like Chandrayaan 2. So, this is there. Also, another plan of uh, ISRO is to launch communication satellite GSAT 30, which will be the first scheduled launch for 2020. And also, SSLV or small satellite launcher will make its debut this year in 2020. So, ISRO has sought a budget of 14,000 crore for 2020-21. Then this is, peace on LAC can help solve border issue, Army Chief. So, this is regarding the statement given by Army Chief General M.M. Naravne. So, he has been sworn in as Army Chief after General uh, Bipin Rawat. He uh, retired uh, as such and uh, he has been appointed as Chief of Defense Staff. So, the army chief says line of actual control, LAC is line of actual control. So, peace here will solve border issues. LAC is a border with China. So, this is there. He says we will build capabilities on northern and northeastern fronts. Then below you have GST gross revenue collected crosses 1 lakh crores. So, this is for the second straight month now. That is for the month of December. 2019, the GST collection has crossed 1 lakh crore mark and is 1.03 lakh crores. Even for the month of November, GST collection had crossed 1 lakh crore mark. And here you can see this was actually the news that Kerala Legislative Assembly has passed a resolution against Citizenship Amendment Act. So, it's regarding that. And this is price of non-subsidized LPG up by rupees 19. So, aviation turbine fuel price, ATF price, which is used in airplanes, aircrafts, has also been hiked by 2.6% and non-subsidized LPG has been hiked by 19 rupees per cylinder. So, this is because of rise in international prices. On page 5, you have AMU winter vacation extended. No new opening date announced. So, you can see in Aligarh Muslim University outside, the police personnel stand guard and the winter vacation has been extended and detailed schedule of opening in a phased manner shall be notified in due course. So, this is what is being done by the government to, uh, to quell protests. So, there are protests against Citizenship Amendment Act taking place in uh, universities, Aligarh Muslim University, Jamia Millia Islamia University. And that is why steps are being taken. This also talks of how these two universities are emerging as epicenters of national awareness. So, lockdown of universities is a grim acknowledgement of the fact that rulers can't intellectually engage with students on Citizenship Amendment Act. They are not responding to the protests by debate or by responding to in, in a manner of you know, responding to the questions which are being raised, concerns which are being raised. Rather, they are being Quelled through use of force. Also, another news is nine more deaths in Kota Hospital. December toll rises to 100. So, at least nine more infants have died in the last two days of December 2019 at JK Loan Hospital in Kota in Rajasthan. So, the death toll here has been increased to 100 for December 2019. So, deaths of 10 children at this government run hospital during the 48 hour period on December 23-24 had triggered opposition criticism and visit by a team from National Commission for Protection of Child Rights too. So, the reasons for 
the death of children it was said said all was mainly due to low birth weight and uh, it was also the questions were raised on oxygen supply too so so these premature and sick newborns have seen deaths the opposition that is bjp here is raising concerns also the hospital said that they have issued installation of central oxygen supply line at the hospital so that is also been undertaken on page 7 you have gujarat plans to double garvi gurjari stores across india so this is gujarat government's plan to have these outlets called garvi gurjari which showcase the retail traditional handicrafts artifacts and clothings of gujarat artisans so number of outlets will increase to 50 from present 25 is what has been planned these outlets will be across the country on page 8 you have nursing students celebrate world health organization's announcement of declaring the year 2020 as year of nurse and midwife so they have they lit candles at kerala's manachira square in kozhikode and this is kerala for steps to curb alien plants growth in nbr so this is nilgiri biosphere reserve so kerala forest and wildlife department is gearing up to adopt comprehensive steps to arrest the rampant growth of invasive alien species so alien species means species which is not of local origin it's come from outside and invasive means it it invades the region means it grows to the detriment of local species so such invasive alien plants especially tree species like senna senna spectabilis and senna spectabilis has many a times been in news so this is important species you should know this is an invasive alien species question can be asked in prelims on this too so this tree species which is found in forests of nilgiri biosphere reserve including wayanad wildlife sanctuary which lies in nilgiri biosphere reserve so the government here is uh, taking steps to arrest its growth to stop its growth on page 9 you have puducherry cm rules out any rethink on state election commission appointment so we have central election commission which overlooks elections at the central level and also state uh, legislative assembly elections and then you have state election commission which oversees local body elections so in puducherry which is a union territory with a government in power like you know there's a chief minister puducherry and delhi are two union territories which have their own legislative assembly and chief ministers too so puducherry chief minister as such you can see here v narayan swami has ruled out any rethink on the appointment of former bureaucrat tm balakrishnan as state election commission and the governor here lieutenant governor is kiran bedi so kiran left and governor for puducherry so the chief minister here says there have been rifts between the governor and the chief minister for years now the way we have seen rifts in delhi because these are union territories where central government has power but still they have legislative bodies because they have advanced enough so they have not been given statehood but they have so they are in this ambiguous position because of which conflicts arise so the chief minister says that since home ministry has not directed the government to select the uh, you know state election commission as such and has not cancelled the appointment of uh, the state election commissioner who has been appointed t tm balakrishnan so the local body elections presently will be overseen by him only is the statement given then below you have vikram not designed to handle large spike in speed so this is isro chief k sivan who is talking about the failure of chandrayaan 2 mission because chandrayaan 3 has been announced now so in chandrayaan 2 the lander vikram could not land make a soft landing so he explains that it was not designed to handle large spike in speed which happened in the last phase of touchdown so that is the reason for the failure so it says this problem has been corrected in the new modules of chandrayaan 3 3 which is due to be sent around the end of 2020 and this is eight new buildings likely under new central vista so parliament house new parliament house is being planned so eight new government office buildings and a new parliament house along with a residential complex will be built near the south block 
so this could house the homes of prime minister and the vice president so these are among the projects under consideration for centers plan for redeveloping central vista so central public road department is likely to issue tender for individual projects for this so this is the 3 km long path which is called central vista starting from rajpath from rajastrapati bhavan till the india gate on the editorial page the first editorial is infrastructure push so this is regarding yesterday's front page news which we saw on 1st jan that government has planned 102 lakh crore infrastructure investment over the next 5 years under various categories so there is this national infrastructure pipeline nip which is a task force which has identified various projects in infrastructure under various sectors such as energy roads railways urban infrastructure etc so many of these projects uh, are already under implementation 42% are 19% are under development and 31% are at conceptual stage but this editorial talks of major hurdle in this and major hurdle is funding so 102 lakh crore funding which has been announced is as such with 39% funding coming from central government 39% coming from state government and remaining 22% coming from private sector but then this uh, editorial says that uh, for such huge investment the private sector presently has more appetite and uh, there will be a need for taking debt in this and whether banks are ready to provide debt to infrastructure projects to the private sector is a concern because already the npas which are there with banks are in these infrastructure projects so it will be wary of providing funding as such to so that is also point being raised and this is a persisting variance so this is regarding the niti aayog sustainable development goals index for 2019 which was in news earlier so it has shown that southern states fare well while northern states as such northeast and north central states have been lagging behind in these un development goals so these are un sustainable development goals which are to be achieved by 2030 so there are there are various sectors you know you know various various indicators as such for sustainable development goals so 17 goals as such have been part of the sustainable development goals of un and to measure the progress of states on these goals actually indicators are established and niti aayog has also developed such indicators on the lines of un indicators so it has hundreds such indicators on the basis of which it ranks states so ranking in health poverty eradication of poverty good health and well being has seen northern states lagging behind but then it also points out that how in case of gender disparity gender equality uh, all states are not up to the mark only some states like kerala himachal pradesh jammu and kashmir have seen themselves in the middle level in gender equality and others fall far short of un goal so various factors because of which we have gender equality goal turning out to be difficult is low sex ratio it is 896 females per 1000 males poor labor force participation of women presence of uh, and presence in managerial positions to high level of informality of labor means labor is not in the formal sector in amongst women and also a major gender pay gap so these are the major concerns apart from this they have inadequate representation in government bodies like in parliament it is only 14.4% representation in local bodies 50% reservation 33% reservation has been provided so in local governance as uh, many states have brought in for 50% reservation in local bodies so we have women participation at 44% in local bodies so these are some of the concerns raised apart from another concern of uh, crimes against women on a high then the lead article is a new the new worry of depleting diplomatic capital so this article says that it would be gross misreading by india to dismiss global reactions to this domestic events as interference in its affairs so we have seen various international organizations and countries raising concerns with respect to developments which are taking place in india like be it uh, abrogation of article 370 you know uh, taking away the special status of jammu and kashmir 
whether be it uh, citizenship amendment act being passed so concerns are being raised and this is the need for a single energy ministry so this article talks of uh, uh, there should be single energy ministry no different energy ministries like ministry of petroleum and natural gas ministry of renewable energy etc because this ministry of power is separate so because all these uh, overlap and uh, ensure energy security sustainability and accessibility there should be a single point of reference in energy sector so this is the case being made in this article then on the op-ed page you have no country for procedural justice so due process is widely seen as a hindrance to rough and ready solutions promising substantive justice so this is also in the, the point being raised in case of extra judicial killings so due process of law has to be followed to provide justice but if uh, there is no patience and you know due process is seen as a hindrance and ready solutions, uh, rough solutions are being brought forth, then it is a cause of concern. And this is preparing for fires. So this talks about disaster management in cases of fires. It says that uh, despite major fires, flagrant violations of buildings and fire safety norms continue unabated in India. So this is a cause of concern. There is already a national building code which has to be adhered to. So, there are detailed set of guidelines on construction, maintenance and operation of buildings of all kinds. So, that such disasters do not occur. Then this is the abiding power of protest. So, it says nothing it seemed could unsettle the present leaders of India until the youth had spoken. On page 12 you have no documents needed to be produced for NPR. So, this is Union Home Ministry which has clarified that no person needs to submit any document during the house to house survey for operating national population register. And, uh, you know, and that information provided by individuals would be accepted and recorded. So, whatever individuals say would be recorded. There is no need for giving any proof. So here you can see the points in the NPR training manual that indicate that the details collected by enumerators will be verified. And what the Home Ministry is saying is not true are these points which have been raised here in the manual, what has been stated as opposed to what Home Ministry says. Then on the international page you have this regarding how in Iraq protesters had uh, seized US Embassy. And they call it a huge win, and uh, they have actually ended this siege now. And this is in North Korea, Kim Jong un. He promises to unveil a new strategic weapon. So, North Korea has ended test moratoriums because it was awaiting uh, you know response from USA, and uh, USA was to, to ease the sanctions which are there on North Korea but no development took place despite two summits between the leaders Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. So now North Korea says it is ending the test moratorium means it will no longer have a stop on its nuclear tests and it is going to test its weapons now. On business page you have auto sector trundles passed in December. So various automobile uh, companies I have clock decline and car makers are adjusting deliveries ahead of BS6, Bharat, sta Bharat stage 6 would be, should be put into effect now. And this is IRDI fines Maruti Hero Broking Firms. So this is Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It has imposed a penalty of 3 crore on Maruti Insurance Broking Limited as such and 2.18 crore on Hero Insurance Broking India. So, this is for not complying with motor insurance service providers guidelines. And below you have FDI rises 15% to $26 billion in April to September. So, foreign direct investment in India has grown close to 15% in the first half of the current financial year. So, that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asha.com. Thank you.